This session is for OCR FP2. The topic is rational functions and we're looking at June 2011, question 1. And in the question, we're asked to express 2x plus 3 upon x plus 3 upon x squared plus 9 in partial fractions. Now the important thing about this is that we remember that when we have a quadratic factor in the denominator, we have to be careful with that and the numerator will have to be a linear function. So if we have a look at that, so we'll have 2x plus 3 all over x plus 3 upon x squared plus 9 and that now will be equivalent to a over x plus 3, so we have a linear factor there, so we need a constant on the numerator, but as I say when we have a quadratic factor on the denominator, we will need a linear term in the numerator. So those two things are going to be equivalent. So we're going to take on the right hand side a denominator of x plus 3 upon x squared plus 9, so that we have the same denominator on each side. And if that is the case, then the numerators must be equal. So 2x plus 3 must be equal to so the numerator on the right, if we have a common denominator of x plus 3 upon x squared plus 9, then x plus 3 into that will go x squared plus 9 times. And then if we divide x squared plus 9 into x plus 3 upon x squared plus 9, it will go x plus 3 times. So the trick now is we want to look at these two sides and make sure we have the same number of x terms. We have two x terms on the left, so we need two x terms on the right, and we need to find a, b and c to make that happen. And we have a constant of 3 on the left, so we need to make sure that what values of a and b and c that we should get will give us a constant of 3 on the right. So the easiest way to start this question is to see that if we put in x equals minus 3 everywhere, then when we have x equals minus 3, this term will be 0, so all of this will disappear. So on the left we'll have minus 6 plus 3, and on the right, if x is equal to minus 3, x squared will be 9, so we'll end up with 18a. And that means that we immediately know that a must be equal to minus 1 6. So we now have the value of a. What we need to do is to try and find the value of b and c. Now unfortunately we can't use this method anymore, but what we can do is we can equate coefficients. So if we take the x term first of all, then over here the coefficient of the x term is 2, and over here, well we've no x terms there, but we would have a, a 3bx there and a cx there, so that would mean that 2 must be equal to 3b plus c. And if we look at the constant term now, then on the left we have a 3, and on the right we'll have a 9a, and we'll have a 3c. So we now have two equations, but we already know from what we did earlier that a was equal to minus 1 6. So what I'm going to do is substitute in a equals minus 1 6 into that equation and that means we'll end up with 3 equals minus 9 over 6, which is minus 3 over 2, plus 3c and if we solve that we'll get c is equal to 3 over 2. So now we know the value of c, we can substitute that value back into our first equation and we end up with 2 equals 3b plus 3c 
plus c, which is 3 over 2. And if we work that out, then that turns out that b is going to be 1 sixth. So we now know the value of A, we know the value of B, and we know the value of C. So all we have to do is to write those now into the expression that we had at the beginning. So on the left we have 2x plus 3 upon x plus 3 times x squared plus 9. And on the right now, A is minus 1 6. So we could write that as minus 1 over 6 lots of x plus 3. And then b is 1 6 and c is 3 over 2. Now it makes life a little bit easier if we just write each of those fractions with the same denominator. So we are going to have um, a b is going to be 1 6, c is now 9 6, so again I'm going to put the 6 in the denominator and b was 1 6, so we have 1x and c was 9 6, so it's 1x plus 9. And arguably you don't really need that uh, 1 there at all, so we could sort of take it away and that probably makes it look better. So if we just consider, there were five marks for that question. So the first thing is you get a mark here for understanding that you need to write this as the sum of two fractions and we have this bx plus c in the numerator. You get a method mark then for finding the, you know, taking a common denominator on the right and finding the numerator. Uh, you get a mark for finding the value of a to be negative one-sixth. Uh, and then you get an accuracy, another accuracy mark for finding the values of B and C. And then a final mark for expressing it as two fractions. So you have now expressed it as partial fractions. So don't forget that if you want to watch further videos of questions from OCR or any other specs, then go to the Further Maths website and follow the link.